Hmm. Battery? We're going to have to deal with that, yeah. Let me just grab that. Thank you. Praise God. Now I'm a little tied down. I don't have a wireless mic, but I think I'm going to be okay. How's everyone doing? It's quiet here this morning. Say hello to me or something. Yeah. <laughs> if you're joining us online, thank you for doing so. Make sure you drop us a line. Let us know what you uh, what you think and how you enjoyed the service. Thanks for joining us online, either Periscope or our YouTube um, channel afterwards. Make sure you contact us. For everyone else here, and if you're watching online as well, let's go ahead and open our Bibles up to the book of 1 John. That's where we're going to land. In a moment, the book of First John, I'll tell you the reference, the rest of the reference shortly. But if you have a Bible, it's good to bring your Bible to church, or at least the screen version thereof. You Google it if you want. That's, I mean, that works. Let's go to the book of First John. I'm just going to pray one more time before we jump in um, to feast on the Word. Are you ready? I'm just going to feast on what the Bible has to say this morning. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you that you, by the power of your Spirit, you take the words that I speak, and Father, you flip them around in the air. God, you cause them to land on each and every heart exactly the way that we need to hear you. Spirit of God, you're the only one that can do that, to bring us into a place like this, from all our different backgrounds, all our different weeks, and different kind of tracks that we're on with our relationship with you. That God, you can take all that and make this word, make this message exactly what each of us needs. Father, I thank you for that. God, come and do that by your Spirit. We're open to you now for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Not sure how many radio junkies we have in the room. You listen to the radio all the time when you're driving around, or you know, maybe even in stores or whatever, you're kind of attuned until you know what they're listening to or what's on the radio. Or I'm not sure, but how many of you um, how many of you have come across um, the radio station in Calgary called Jack? I believe it's, I don't know that. They should send me some money now, but I believe it's um, 96.9, Jack FM, you can, you can Google it. But um, I'm not at all, from a church standpoint, recommending the station. But um, Jack, I, you know, I do like their, uh, and some of you are giggling because you know what they're like, but kind of a little rough around the edges. Yeah, their um, slogan, uh, Jack FM, their, their slogan is playing whatever, whenever. Check, check. Playing whatever, whenever. That's their slogan as a radio station, which basically gives them license to do whatever, whenever, and they kind of take that license. For instance, on Valentine's Day, they used to do this. I'm not sure if they're going to do it this year, but on Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day, all day long, they play songs about breakup, about cheating on each other, you know? They, they play songs about jealousy and about wanting things that you can't have or getting things that you're not supposed to have. They, they play songs about breakup and about heartache and about bitterness of soul. And you know, right when the rest of society is celebrating love, you know, and just trying to get everything right on when it comes to that, you know, the love of your life or, you know, your husband or your wife or if you're dating or if you hope to date someday, the rest of the world is trying to look on the positive side of that. And there's Jack FM, you know, playing on the stores and in cars and vehicles all around you and stories of breakup and heartache and bitterness and sadness. And, and you know, it is actually quite amusing to listen to the station on Valentine's Day because you're like, it's such, it's such great contrast, you know, songs of affairs and comparison. Jealousy, and so on and so forth. I want to I say to you this morning that sometimes, if we're not careful, in a world, in a life that is so blessed by God, with a God that is so incredibly loving towards us, that if you and I aren't careful, we can end up getting tuned into the wrong station. Yeah. Now hear me out for a second. We can end up with kind of like sub-thoughts. You know, like there's the thoughts about what you're meant to be doing right there in that moment of time, you know. There's the thought about how to answer that email or what you're going to do next at work or what's waiting for you when you get home. You know, there's, there's all those thoughts. But then there's the sub-thoughts. How many of you know what I mean? There's the, the underlying 
kind of the undercurrent of thoughts. And those are the thoughts that, if we're not careful, can get caught, turned into something that is not from God. You know, maybe it's subtle, or maybe it happens for you all the time, or maybe you slip into it, but thoughts like, man, I'm just not measuring up. Huh? Come on now. If I was better at this, then I would be having different results. Or, God, I would like to serve you in a better way, but God, I'm just not worthy to do so. Right? Sub-thoughts. Thoughts that would get us into trouble. Kind of like a Jack FM, you know, maybe your sub-thoughts are like this. Playing whatever, whenever. Yeah? You know, that there's no real intentionality between, you know, in your inner thought life, in your private world, in your... You know, what goes on that nobody else is really privy to except just you, yourself, and I. Like, just your inside dialogue, your self-talk. We can be tuned into something there that's not intentional, that just becomes a voice that separates us from the love that God has for us. You know, just life's journey, bumping through life, can lead us, oh, hear me out, to believe wrong things about ourselves. And here you and I are, the precious sons and daughters of God. And yet because of the way that life treats us and some of the things that happen, we can end up feeling like far short of that. Am I right? We can end up thinking along lines, getting on little hamster wheels in our brains, little, it's not a great illustration anymore, but little cassette tapes, how many, how many remember those? It just kind of plays. You know, and then when it's done, one side just plays, the other just continuous play, you know, just plays these thoughts of not measuring up, that I'm not good enough, that I've made a mess of my life, that I've made my bed, that I've got a lie in it, that I am not worthy to be blessed by God, to be loved by God, that, you know, just don't measure up. Life's journey can lead us to believe wrong things about ourselves, and, and you know this, you've lived in the world long enough to know that here's how it happens. It's like a, a, a repeating cycle, a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't that right? I mean, we show up in life feeling like we're not enough, and what happens? That's what we see here, 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 and here in our lives, the way that this person treats us. The job that we have. Come on, it's true, isn't it? It's confirmation bias. I knew I wasn't enough. I knew I couldn't measure up. I knew that it was going to go south at some point. You know, I always seem to screw things up, and now look at me. Here I am again. I'm just not good enough. Right? It's like a confirmation bias. It's like a trap that we get stuck in. Maybe you're sitting there thinking this morning, you know, I wish so-and-so was here so they could hear this because I think that's what's going on with them. And here's why we think that. It's easier to see this in somebody else than it is to see it in the mirror. Be like, you know what? I think I'm locked in a cycle like that. I think I'm locked in a trap like that. But I want to submit something to you this morning. We all are. Huh? To whatever degree, we have a revelation on how much God loves us. We are locked in a cycle of how good we think we are. Of our thoughts about ourselves and our own evaluation of what's going on. So I want to say, you know, you might be looking at somebody pointing the finger in your mind and saying, you know what, that's true of that person. There's, that there's a rejection complex there. There's a, they'll never really get ahead. They'll never really move ahead until they get over that thing on the inside of themselves. You know, that all might be true, but each of us, yeah, we're locked into patterns of thought. And I want to tell you that one of the things that the Spirit of God wants to do over your life and my life is break us out of those patterns. Break us out of that stuck place into a place that's much better because God takes us to much better places. We need to tune away from Jack FM to whatever, whenever, to 88.9. All right, so we need, to, we, need, we, need, we need to tune away from the whatever, whenever and tune into, oh God, he loves me so much because, I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way, but the main point of all creation is that God loves us. It's the main message of this book. It's the main point of all creation. Of all things that God could say he is, like powerful, magnificent, awesome, bigger than, of all things that the Bible goes says this, God is love. love. Yeah? It's the whole point. Love is the main point. The Bible says in John 3, 16, how many of you can quote that at me? For God so loved 
He loved you and me so much. It says in Genesis, you know, when you look back in Genesis, the account of creation, and no matter kind of where your scientific brain or whatever goes with the story of creation and the steps of faith that are needed to believe, you know, in you know about what God, you know, what God said that He did, you know, and how you kind of unpack that in your mind. Put all that aside. In that biblical account is this. God made the world, and God saw that it was good. That's what it says. So he made the world, and he, he wasn't like scratching his head thinking, yeah, you know, next time I'm going to do it better. You know, where's more? <laughs> you know, but next time I'm going to kind of do it better. He, he was looking at it and saying, this is good. This is what I wanted. He's looking at mankind there saying, this is good. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but I'm going to, you're there in 1 John, keep that place. I'm going to, we're going to land there in a moment. But in Proverbs chapter 8, I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but it's replete in different creation accounts that Jesus was present in creation, that he was actually doing the creating work, however that happened and whatever that looked like. And I want you, I'm just going to check this out in Proverbs chapter 8. You can see this in Proverbs 8, where God has personified his wisdom. It's a great place to dig into. It's just like, Jesus, show me, show me what your role is. Show me who you are in this. But right around verse 30 in Proverbs 8, you'll find these words. Then I, and we believe it's Jesus that's talking, it says, Then I was beside him, meaning God. Catch this. Then I was beside God during creation. As a master craftsman, he was crafting the world during creation, all right? And I was daily his delight, meaning God the Father was delighting in me, says Jesus, the Son. And he was delighting in me, rejoicing always before him. All right? Watch this, verse 31. Rejoicing in his inhabited world. And my delight. Okay, so Jesus was rejoicing in the world as it was inhabited. Cool, huh? He was rejoicing in it. And he says... Rejoicing in his inhabited world and my delight, Jesus says, my delight was with the sons of men, with mankind, with humanity. God's delight, Jesus' delight was with us. You read Genesis 1, 2, 3, and one thing stands out, at least if you read with some questions in mind, one thing stands out. How long was that garden time before sin came in? You know what I'm talking about with the, the Garden of Eden? How long did they live in the Garden of Eden before sin came in? It's like asking this question about your marriage, you know? How long were you in that honeymoon period? Or how long were you at that, you know, that, that incredible connection point in your marriage before other things crept in, before the cares of life, or the stresses, or the worries, or the separation, or the difference, or the distance, or the... How long was that awesome time? Because... All of the Bible following the account of Genesis is the story of how God, out of his love and his mercy towards us, works it around so that we can get back to that Garden of Eden, fellowship, community, him rejoicing with us and us rejoicing with him again. Are you aware of that? That everything Jesus did, big thoughts, folks, big thoughts here. Everything Jesus did in his death and his burial and his resurrection reversed what sin did in the garden. My friend, don't ever doubt this, that God loves you and wants to bring you back to that incredible Garden of Eden moment where it's you and him rejoicing in each other. Love is the main point. The whole Bible is, the Bible is getting back to that point. It's, it's living, it's getting back to that point and then it's living from that place of intimacy with God. It's living from that place. Now, I want to, I'm going to spell out just a few problems that kind of happen when we live and when we talk about this kind of stuff, some, some problems. Don't you find, I know that I do, that when, when I'm looking at evaluating myself or I'm looking at what God thinks about me, that my mind drifts towards what I do more than who I am. Yeah? That we become concerned about what we are doing, how we're functioning, what our measures or metrics of success are, we get, we get so, so distracted by that stuff that we forget that God just loves us the way that we are, just for being us. Yeah? I mean, think about a, think about a perfect romance. It's a travesty that if the romance between a man and a woman is boiled down to what they 
do for each other, the functions of everyday life, the, the work that has to be done, the, the tactical stuff of the relationship, isn't that right? I mean, really, at the, at the end of the day, the, the love and the romance between a man and a woman, to husband and wife, boyfriend, girl, that love boils down. It, it's there because they love each other for who they are, right? Right? There's, we're not judging them by their actions. This is where we get into problems in our relationships. But if we can love them for who they are, that's the source, right? And to get back to that, husbands and wives, <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming. This, think about it. That is the source of your relationship to love each other for who they are, not for the behaviors in their life. Come on now. Because love, God's love towards us is not predicated or dictated based on how well we're doing. See, when we're doing well in life, we would want it to be because then God is blessing us and he's judging other people. But that's not the way God is. God is not loving you and me based on what we do. But it's a problem because we drift there all the time. You know, God, how am I doing with this? God, am I reading my Bible enough? Am I praying enough? Am I going to church enough? Am I talking to other people enough about you? Am I, am I being nice or loving enough? Am I, am I, am I? And we've got all these things that we question because we drift to that place. We get confused or distracted over that, yeah? It's a problem. It's almost, it's almost like we think in our minds that really what we need to do in our relationship with God is make ourselves great again, you know? It's gonna, you know, we need to make ourselves great again. You know, enough is enough. I'm going to make me great again, and then when I'm great, God will shine his smile upon me once again. Isn't that right? Like, we kind of we think that way, right? Here's another problem. Hear me out. This is, this, is, this is truer than you and I want it to be. Hear me out. The love void between us and God, the lack of full revelation of how much God loves us, all right? The, the love void between us and God creates the love void between us and other people. You hear? The love void between us and God, the fact that that revelation isn't complete, that we're tuned into the wrong station sometimes, that deficit plays out in our relationships with other people. Come on now, that's true, isn't it? I mean, that's really true. The shortfall in my understanding of God's love is my shortfall in my loving of you. And the same with you and your family and your friends and your coworkers. And the same across the world. I mean, it plays out. If we don't have the vertical thing right, then we don't have the horizontal thing right. All right. Solutions. Let's get down to some solutions this morning. I'm going to take you to that chapter, that, that verse there in 1 John. 1 John chapter 3, this is the scripture that we're going to come back to and bounce around over the next couple of weeks. This is 1 John. And we're going to go to chapter 3. First John chapter 3 and starts out like this in verse 1. Behold. Everybody say behold. Behold. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. Let's just stop right there, mid-verse. Here's a verse, all right, it talks about reconnecting with God, and it says the way to reconnect with God is not, not by dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's in your life, not by deciding that you're going to be the one that's going to make you great again, not by being the one that's going to put up all kinds of walls and not let anybody else in. That it doesn't happen that way. That the way, the way to connect with God again is like this. You need to see something that you haven't seen. To behold. To look intently at. Come on, we've all been walking with God long enough to know this. That we become... I don't know, we have this, this transition experience, this conversion experience, and maybe, maybe that's new for you, but here's where, God attracts you, he attracts you with his love, he attracts you with his word, the Bible says that the spirit of God pulls you towards him, and as you, at some point on that journey towards God, your creator, who's doing it because he loves you, at some point on that journey you say, okay God, I will, I will give you my life, Jesus, I believe in you. And you change your approach to God from not being, well, I guess I'm good enough, or I'm not as bad as the next person, or whatever. You change that approach 
You reach this line, you cross over. Maybe some of you need to get there still in your life. You cross over that line where you're like, God, I'm in. I choose to believe in you, Jesus, and what you did for me. And when your heart says that to God, you become one of God's kids. And here's how it goes. This lets the rest of us in because this is our experience. From that time on, we drift towards what we're doing for God instead of who we are towards God, right? It's the problem. We drift in that direction. But to get back or to tweak our relationship with God. You ever done that with your relationship with God before? It needs tweaking. It needs, I'm going to fine-tune some stuff, some fine-tune dialing. I'm going to get some noise, some static off of this voice that I'm hearing, and I'm going to tune it in to what God's saying. To do that, here's what it requires, whether it's a massive change for you or whether it's fine-tuning. Here's what it requires. I need to see something that I haven't seen yet. I need to look somewhere that I haven't spent enough time looking yet. I need to behold. Say behold. Behold. I need to behold what? What manner of love the Father, your Father in heaven, what manner, what type, what kind, what quality of love he has for me? That's it. To get back to something or to tweak something or to, to solve this problem of drift in my life, to solve this deficit of my, my love deficit with God being played out in my life and my relationship, to solve that, to fix that, I need to see it. And I need to see what manner of love. This, might, this means to spend some time focusing on it. To spend some time focusing on how much he loves us. Church, when we do this, our defenses begin to fall. Our defenses between God and us begin to fall when we realize how much he loves us. Our deepest questions are answered. Because deep inside, whether we're willing to admit it or not, deep inside we ask this, do I matter to anyone? Huh? And God would answer with a booming voice if we will tune into it. He's already told us, you matter to me, is what God would say. From deep within us, maybe we're not even aware, maybe we are slightly sometimes when the day is going bad or negative or we're in a downward cycle. We'll ask this, we'll say, am I measuring up? Am I good enough? And booming from heaven is the voice that has already answered that question for us. That you are enough. That you are accepted. That you are cherished just for being who you are. From deep inside we ask, am I getting somewhere in life? Am I fulfilling what you want me to fulfill? Am, does, does my life really matter? And booming from heaven, if we will tune in and listen, is the voice that is already answered to say, you are already accepted. You are already good enough. I love you just the way you are. How much does he love us? Let's focus in on this. We're going to behold it this morning. How much does God love us? Hear me out. He loved you enough. Maybe you haven't heard this for a while, or maybe never before, but listen. God loved you enough to choose you. The Bible says from the, before the creation of the world, he looked down throughout all eternity and he chose you. He picked you. He said, that one. I can't wait till that one is born. I can't wait till that one is manifest and comes out. That thought of mine, that creation, that desire of mine. I can't wait. He chose you. I don't know, maybe your brain gets mixed up with that, and you're kind of like, this, I messed up a little bit, and you're kind of like, God, how could God love, how could God choose you and you and you and you and you and you? But God does. It's just the same way that you have multiple children. Lots of us have multiple children. You love each one, right? The same. You would choose. You would say, I want that one, and you would say it all the same. That's what God does to you. He loves you enough to choose you. Church, he loves you enough to rescue you. For his grace and his mercy that he displayed in Jesus to find its way to you. To get right to that place, right in your face, in your heart where you're like, Jesus, I'm going to accept you. Jesus, I cannot run from your love. As that song that we run you, the song that we sing, I cannot hide. I 
cannot run from your love. Because he loves you enough to rescue you. To reach down into the darkest dungeons of your life. The darkest, deepest places. And to say, I'm going to be with you. And I'm going to keep you. I'm going to keep you strong. I'm going to keep you alive. I'm going to keep you. Because I love you. And he rescued us in Jesus. The Bible says Jesus did what he did because he loved. For God so loved the world that he came. He loves us enough to rescue us. How many of you are thankful for that? For the rescuing love of God. That he didn't leave us to our own devices. But he reached down from heaven. He gave his only son to come and to rescue us. He loves you and me enough. He loves us enough to care for us. Oh, how he cares. The Bible says that if we're weighted down and burdened by many things in life, that we can come to God and we can cast our care upon him. And it says, because he cares for us. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that he cares. No matter what weight or stress or financial difficulty or, or thing that you don't want to face or relational issue or problem in your life, no matter what it is, he cares about it because he cares for you. He wants to hear your prayers because he cares. He chooses, he loves you enough to choose you, to rescue you, to care for you. He loves you enough to guide you. He sent his spirit, the Holy Spirit, in the world to guide us. So that in any and every situation, all we have to do is ask, Father, what should I do here? Holy Spirit, help me with this situation. God, what should I say right now? And he is there with us. He has not left us alone. But he is with us and he is guiding us through life. He loves us enough to guide us. Are you thankful for that this morning? Are you thankful? Oh, I sure am. You got to behold it. You got to behold it. God, I'm behold. I want to behold you enough. You know what? He loves you enough to bring you home. The Bible says that this place, this earth... It's not your home. It's not my home. He loves us enough to bring us home. He has made a plan. The Bible says that he is preparing a place for us, with us specifically in mind. That even a heart, your heart, my heart has been there. Even a heart that is resistant to him, he will stay close. He will try to guide. He will have mercy. He will try to rescue. He will pursue right up until their dying day. And he will still be there saying, I'm ready to forgive you. Even those of us and other, others that have kind of like, God, talk to the hand. God, I don't want you part of my life. God, whatever. Those of us that have been hurt by church world or by Christianity and said, I don't want anything to do with that. Those of us that have kind of put our, stuck our noses up with God, he is so merciful that he has done whatever he can do to stay available for us, for his grace to be merciful around us, for us to pursue us with his presence, to send people, to send parents and neighbors and friends across our path, to make us think once again about God. Isn't that right? Like he pursues us like this. Why? Because he wants to bring us home. He wants to bring us to himself. Because he loves us that much. He loved you enough to choose you. He loved you enough to rescue you. He loves you enough to care for you. He loves you enough to guide you. He loves you enough to bring you home to himself. He loves you. And here's the deal. We need that love. We need revelation of that love. We need to soak ourselves in that love. We need it. The love of God answers our deepest questions of who I am and why am I here. Once we solve that, once we begin to connect a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, once we see that, once we behold that, that's the jugular right there, my friend. That's the root of all kinds of good things right there. We just tap into that. Tap in. We see it brand new and fresh because the love deficit that you have between you and God, and I'm including myself in that picture, the, the lack of understanding, the, the gap that's there from the full revelation to the revelation that we have will be solved in our lives somehow. Hear me out. You will find a solution for it somehow. 
Because your heart wants to be loved. You hear me? It needs to be loved. Your heart will try and find that from every possible source because it craves it. It's made for God. And so it longs for God and it craves it and it's going to try everything in its power to find it. Your heart, and you know this about yourself, yet alone looking around at other people that are maybe you bump shoulders with and your family and in your life that, that will find a way to satisfy the longing of the heart, won't we? <laughs> won't we? I mean, we'll get involved in all kinds of relationships that seem to go that way, but yet they leave us wanting. Isn't that right? Maybe we'll fall into the trap of drinking just a little bit too much because, man, it just helps me forget. And I mean, if you know, that's a dead end road. Isn't that right? We will find a way. Maybe we'll get so lost at work, like just so busy. I mean, that's easy in our city, isn't it? I mean... I mean, that's in our culture, in our society. I mean, let's just get so involved and so busy and so always on and so always reading something, doing something that we never allow the emptiness in our heart to show. We will find something. But the only answer is Jesus. And the only answer for the world is a church and a group of people that will get that from God. And show that to the world. That's the only answer. You with me this morning? It's like this. You'll have symptoms in your life of a lack of a love relationship with God. I mean, you'll have symptoms. You'll, you'll try all kinds of things. You'll feel like you're limping along through life. You'll hurt. You know, bear with the analogy. You'll be like a person that just gets, just has a, just has a cold. It's like a perpetual cold. Like there's a virus. Like there's something wrong. There's something that needs healing. There's something that needs attention. And if you just mask it, if you just mask the symptoms, I mean, like a natural cold, right? Like we all do it, right? We mask the symptoms and we just kind of wait it out, you know? I'm just going to cancel everything for a couple of days. I'm going to take a lot of this and I'm just going to wait it out, you know? Hopefully you don't do that. Maybe you do. I don't know. Different degrees, yeah. You could ask Jesus to heal you. <laughs> yeah, do what I do. Jesus, please heal me, and then take some, right? <laughs> Praise God. Okay. While he's healing me, he doesn't mind me feeling better. Okay, great. But it just masks it. Are you with me? Like, if you're there sick, and you're masking this, your symptoms week after week, how many of you know that you're going to, you, you can run into problems? I mean, this is not healthy, isn't that right? You know, my wife, well, you know, I might be kind of like taking one of these on the slide, you know. My wife, she's just taking this stuff. How many of you know this stuff? <laughs> You know, I'm, in, I'm heavy on the sponsorships this morning. How many of you know this stuff? Yeah? I mean, we're taking, you know, like, you know, whatever we're doing, you know, kind of coughing and sneezing or whatever, and, and uh, you know, the rest of the family can be kind of drifting into kind of like a bout of dealing with something, you know, how it kind of goes through the whole family. And Mary's just walking around popping these little black tablets. And she's feeling fine. And, she, you know, I'll be like, <clears throat> and she'll be like, oh, you should take one of those things. I'll be like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, sure enough, I get sick, and she walks around. I'm fine, fine. There have been so many colds, viruses, or whatever that have gone through our house, you know. <laughs> and she's like, no, I think I feel fine. I think I, this one didn't bother me at all. And it's all because of this stuff right here. This is cold attack. Echinacea. Am I saying that right? Echinacea. This is echinacea. This is echinacea. And this... This will, and it's got some other stuff in it, this will get rid of your cold or prevent your cold from happening faster than anything, anything else because it helps you in your immune system repel whatever it is that's coming against you that would seek to trip you up, right? And make you, okay, here's the analogy. God's love for you is what you really need. Hmm? All the things that try to fill the gap, all the things that you and I do to run around to try to feel happier about our lives. All of the ways we sort of self-arrange for our own satisfaction and our own entertainment. Hear me out. They all will fall short in the end. It's time. Time for us to tune in. Just to really deep dive. This whole month we're going to be talking about this. To really tune in to the love of God. The love of God answers our deepest questions. Our identity issues result in destiny issues. But identity revealed who we are 
between us and God reveals results and destiny being revealed. I'm going to give you a question here before we, before we finish this morning. I want us all to think about this as we're tuning in, as we're beholding the love of God. What would it be like if you really knew you were loved by God? And many of us we would say, you know what? I already do. I already know that. Hear me out. Nice and loud. No, you don't. You don't. Ephesians says. Ephesians chapter 3, we're going to go there next week. Oh, that we would understand. These are believers talking. And they say this. Oh, that we would understand how high and how wide and how deep is the love of God. That we might comprehend the love of God that can't be fully understood. That we may be filled with all the fullness of God. So hear me out. What would it be like for you if you knew how much God loved you. Well, I already do. No. What would it really be like if we really knew how much he loved us? Let's take it a step further. What would you do in that difficult situation if you really knew how loved you were? Next time things flare up, you know, between you and honey, you and your valentine. Next, your next time things are like, what would you do differently if you knew that you were fully loved. Next time you reach for whatever vice you reach for, what would happen for you? What would it feel like for you? What would you do differently if you knew you were really loved? Does his love have power to change the way that we live? Absolutely. Does his love for you have more power than it has in the past to change how you live now? Absolutely. So what would that be like? For you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend some time and we're going to behold the love of God. Over this month, we're just going to deep dive into it and we're going to behold it. We're going to look at it. We're going to glance over it. His banner over us is love. And then we're going to live from that place of being fully loved. We're going to live like that in all the different ways that that means. We've got lots of time to unpack this, but for now, Let's behold. Let's spend some time looking at his love. Why don't you stand up with me this morning? We're going to close in prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hope this morning I've piqued your interest or maybe generated a little bit of, you know what, yeah, I, I need to know that. I, I want to know that more. Well, if that's you this morning, why don't we just close our eyes? Let's just pray to the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, we love you so much. Father, I thank you for your spirit that's in this place. God, I pray over us a spirit of revelation. A spirit of revelation. God, that there would be a spirit with us that would go with us this morning. Yeah, a spirit in us right here in this place that would go with us. God, I ask you for your presence to pursue us. Each of us. All this week. God, let us be reminded. You know, as we see all the red go up in the stores, right? As we hear the different, I don't know, all the marketing or whatever around Valentine's Day. Oh, let's be marketed by heaven. By heaven's voice. Let's tune in to heaven's voice. Oh, how much he loves us. Father, as a church and as individuals, as, as believers in Jesus. As we set our hearts to do this. To behold what manner of love. He's given us. Spirit of God, come and help us. Come and open up revelation. Do you want that this morning? Just go ahead and ask him. As you come, you know on these Sundays, as you hear these messages, or as you tune in and you listen, come on, come on. There's brokenness in you and me that he can heal with one glimpse of his eye. There are problems that we deal with over and over. There are relational difficulties that we don't know how to get around, stalemates and stuck places in our lives that we don't know what to do with. 
all but his love. With one glimpse, with one bit of insight more, you'd be all gone. All the things you care about, you wouldn't care about because you know he cares for you. All the things you stress and strive and struggle over, you wouldn't anymore. Perfect peace would be yours. There's a verse in the Bible that says that perfect love, God's love, it casts out all fear. What would your life be like with no fear? Of anything. <laughs> God, let us be a people. That know more and more and more what it is that you love us. That we should be called children of God. That Jesus, you would do what you did so that just so that we could be with you. What kind of love is this? What kind of love have we gotten caught up into? What kind of love have we just begun to scratch the surface of? What kind of love is this? That we should be called your kids. What kind of love? God, we ask this question of you. Spirit of God, come and move in our hearts to show us and reveal your love to us. Father, we thank you for it. You want that spirit of revelation? Just go ahead and receive that. I'm just gonna pray it out over our church. Father, as we go this morning, as we go into the, in our different, you know, the rest of our day and our different kind of weeks and the different families and places, Father, I thank you for your love that's poured down upon us. Let the spirit, here it is right here, receive it. Let a spirit of revelation and insight, let a spirit, spirit of revelation be upon us that we might know and understand what is the height and the width and the depth, that we would comprehend with all the saints what is the love that has been given us, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Thank you for that spirit imparted now, 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 over, over every hungry, hungry heart. Over every hungry heart, I say now, 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 in Jesus' name. Take it with you. Take it with you. It's the spirit's job upon your life now for you to see it more, for you to know it more. Oh, he will overwhelm it. You'll be sitting in your car and tears will pour down your cheeks. You'll be like, God, I see it. Did you love me? Do this in us, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you want prayer for anything this morning, please feel free to come on up. I'd love to pray with you further. Other than that, you can be dismissed. Enjoy the rest of your day. In Jesus' name, everybody stay safe on those roads out there. Amen. All right. Angels over us, following us in all our ways. Praise God. Thank you for watching.